Good morning. But isn't it all part of living? Clouds form above you. Break a day, bringing the only way. Singing I love. We want to thank Peter Yelda and Craig Nuttycomb for giving us music this morning. It's great to wake up to music. And we want to thank all the people from Santa Barbara who are coming up here to support us today. This is the beginning, it's not the end. Downwinders. <laughs> I'm Jane Swanson, so we are the two spokespersons for San Luis Obispo Mothers for Peace. There are many other members of mothers here today, and some of them are of the male gender, but they're of the motherly mindset. We care for the earth, so they're mothers too. But we're asking two big things. Number one, the environmental study has got to be done. There is no reason for this lands commission to avoid knowledge. I mean, why would you take a vote on a land lease for a nuclear power plant if you don't know what the results would be. Why would you want to make a big decision in a state of ignorance? And the last I saw the staff report, it was saying, stay ignorant. The State Lands Commission staff report as of Friday said, we recommend that the Lands Commission allow these new land leases of the Tidelands to PG&E and not bother to have the knowledge to be gained from an environmental report. So that's nuts. So we're definitely calling for the environmental study. It's necessary under the CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act. It's not an option. It's not frosting on the cake. It's not doing the public a favor. The Lands Commission works for us. They work for the people of the state of California. It is their duty to protect the environment, and the first thing they gotta do is get an environmental study so they know what they're doing. So that's number one from mothers. Number two from mothers is that um, we're asking for a 30-day extension like, hey, they don't have to make a decision today. This decision can wait at least 30 days, the, the deal, PG&E's deal, and of course we're happy about, you know, no license renewal, that's a good thing, and we're happy about moving to sustainable energy. But the other side of the coin is PG&E gets to operate that thing for nine more years. That's not a good thing. Because this deal that PG&E offers does not address safety or the environment in one bit. And all of those problems of an operating nuclear plant surrounded by 13 earthquake faults, all of those problems remain, all of those challenges, all of those dangers. So we're saying to the Lands Commission, you don't have to hurry, and you haven't given us time to digest this information. Mothers for Peace had two fantastic lawyers working with us to write our position, and they did a lot of research, but they, they don't have all the information. The public doesn't have all the information, so it's too soon to make a decision. Uh, I'm going to wind up and give it back to uh, Linda, but thank you very much, everyone, for being here. As far as I'm concerned, you're all mothers, and here's Linda. In February, the staff published um, the staff report about this project, about uh, giving new leases to PG&E for the, these Tidelands. In that staff report, they recommended that an EIR be done. And it was only on June 24th. This is June 28th today. On June 24th, they sent out a new staff report. And in that staff, that, as, that was last Friday. I guess it was available the evening of June 23rd, but we didn't know it. So we saw it on the morning of Ju June 24th. In that staff report, they completely reversed what they had said in their previous staff report. They had, in the previous one, they had said, oh, this is such a big project, blah, blah, blah. We need to have um, the, we need to have the EIR done. We find that, um, you know, if PG&E doesn't have to go through an environmental impact report, they are 
sailing smoothly out to the end of this license in the way that they always intended to do it in the first place. So it, in our, we are very, very grateful that this thing is going to be the light at the end of the tunnel is there. But you have to realize, too, with the joint agreement that they made with Friends of the Earth and the NRDC, et cetera, PG&E can withdraw from that agreement any time they wish. It is not a binding agreement. So this is the time when we have to put their feet to the fire. This is the time when we can, this is the most important time probably in the history of this plant for the people. So you, it's, everybody you know who really cares about this thing, who wants it shut down, wants safety, you've, you know, we've got to come together right now. It's so important. I want to introduce a couple of people who came up. We have friends here from Santa Barbara, um, quite a few friends here from Santa Barbara, and they're, they're not all here yet, um, but they'll be here. And two people from the World Business Academy who have been our strong, strong allies throughout the past few years who are working on, they'll tell you what they're working on, but they are committed to the shutdown of Diablo and we're very, very grateful that they're here. Um, Jerry Brown, can you come up for a few minutes? Hello, I'm the other Jerry Brown. My name is Dr. Jerry Brown. I'm the director of the Safe Energy Project for the World Business Academy. How many people came up from Santa Barbara today? Wow, thank you for coming. Uh, we are honored to join with the Mothers for Peace and acknowledge their 40-year battle to close down Diablo Canyon. That battle is coming to an end now. In addition, to the very serious seismic, earthquake, tsunami, Fukushima-like risk that Diablo Canyon poses, in addition to the fact that continuing to operate this plant for another nine years will kill a billion fish a year through the once through cooling, and that this whole thing will give uh, PG&E everything they wanted, get all their money out of the plant, get a, P a complete pass on all state regulations uh, prior to this, we are coming here today to talk about the health issues. How many of you know someone who has cancer? All right. As anyone knows, ionizing radiation causes cancer. As many of you know, but few people out in the public know, that nuclear plants are federally permitted to be allowed to release periodically radioactive liquids and gases into the environment. This has been traced by strontium-90 levels that are tracked in baby teeth that have gone up in this area. The World Business Academy commissioned a study in, that was published in 2014 by an epidemiologist. And what they found was that in the decades following the opening of Diablo Canyon in the mid-80s, San Luis Obispo County, relative to the rest of California, went from a low cancer county to a high cancer county. And infant mortality, the number of infants who die in the first year of birth, which can be measured by zip code in the radiation plume from the plant, that increased significantly. Ironically, when a reactor closes, like Rancho Seco did in 1989 by a popular referendum near Sacramento, in the 20 years that followed, cancer rates plummeted and infant health started improving in two years after that plant closed. So they say, well, you should, there should only be unusual circumstances to exempt a pre-existing plant like Diablo Canyon from an EIR. Well, if killing adults and children, if giving cancer to people through radi radiation emissions from nuclear plants is not an unusual circumstance, I don't know what is. The World Business Academy is here today to join with the Mothers for Peace and to insist on a full environmental impact review by the State Lands Commission. I would like to introduce my colleague, President of the World Business Academy, Ronaldo Brutico. Thank you. Thank you, R. Jerry. 
Um, I just want to make one distinction, a very subtle but critical legal distinction in what you heard a minute ago from the Mothers of Peace. The staff did not overtly recommend avoiding the EIR. Even in the changed and somewhat redacted and struck out and now reissued version of their opinion, what they acknowledged is what some very talented lawyers in California have addressed, which is the commission could find no EIR was required. They did not say they should find that no EIR. So the commission staff has actually tried to play it both ways. It is true. In the report in February that the staff put out, it was very clear that they came down on the side of both California case law at the Supreme Court level and what is the current uh, public trust doctrine interpretation. They also came down very clearly on the fact that the EIR would be required. They were very clear in February. So what happened between February and today? Well, actually, last Friday. What happened? A deal got cut behind closed doors to protect the financial investment of PG&E at the cost of the health of the citizens living under the plume of this nuclear power plant and at the known risk of a seismic event that could cost tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars and destroy the economy of the central coast of California for a thousand years. We are not talking about a minor disruption when a nuclear power plant, which according to the staff report in February, is not capable of withstanding the full impact of a 7.7 .7 Richter quake, which would be likely the possibility of the Hawesgrave fault triggering. So when you say this plant is not capable of withstanding the, new, the earthquake that we know could happen, when you say this plant was sited in a place which legally it could not be put today because of the fault lines that are underneath it, when you add that together with the duty of the public trust doctrine, which says you're supposed to put the health and safety of the public in front of everything else, and when you combine that with a recent California Supreme Court's case that says when you are administering matters of this type, you must look at the unusual circumstances of each plant. Unusual circumstance number one, it is the last remaining nuclear power plant in the state of California. That's unusual. Number two, it does 87% of the total damage of all aquatic life in the state along the coast because of its once through cooling. Number three, the study that Jerry referred to in 2014, we were able to put out one of the top epidemiologists in the country, Joe Mangano's report, which no one has substantively been able to refute, that, call, that basically tracks the higher level of cancer cluster and cancer incidences under the plume of this nuclear reactor. Meaning when they off gas, and if you're 15 miles downwind, you're getting irradiated with strontium-90, which is a highly toxic, no one would ever argue, it is an extraordinarily toxic radioactive isotope. It's going up the flu. They're allowed to do that. And that plume stretches 63 miles south, just to let you know. So there's a lot of people under that plume. The study we commissioned compared people to the left of the plume and in the plume. To the left of the plume, normal cancer rates. In the plume, through the roof. So we commissioned a second study. And we now have it back in preliminary form. We'll be releasing some of the details today. In the second study, we took just one chunk of the cancer issue. We looked at infant mortality. And we said to Joe, who's the best guy in the world to check your work? He said, oh, that would be Chris Busby over in the UK. We said, great, we'll go hire Chris Busby. So we did. We hired Chris Busby in the UK. He's part of the European Radiological. He, Chris has 55 peer-reviewed papers. He's the leading expert on the linkage between radioactive activity and what happens to human health. His preliminary findings, and I want you to remember this number. At least two dozen unborn children will die in the next nine years. And that number is likely to go up. Because strontium-90 is a 29-year half-life. It accumulates. So I've got a question. Whose 24 children are those going to be? Are they going to be the president of pg &E? Not likely. He doesn't live here. Is it going to be any of the uh, state lands commission people? No. The commissioners, they don't live here. Those are 24 dead babies in this county. And that is so immoral and disgusting that that alone should be cause for an environmental impact statement. You recognize, you recognize 
that if you don't do an environmental, let's say that somebody thought they could legitimately question Chris Busby's work. I say, great. Let's question Chris Busby. Let's do it in the light of day, under cameras, as part of the EIR. Let's, the, the duty of the state is when somebody raises a legitimate health issue, the state, we contend, legally has no option. They must do an EIR. They do not have the liberty to say no. The staff gave them a way out. They said, well, you could interpret this as not applying to the exception that deals with unusual plants. Yes, you could. And if you do, we will sue you. We will sue you all the way to the state Supreme Court of California, and we will win. There is no turning back. When you know, as I know, because I now have Chris Busby's report in my hands, when you know that children are going to die if you don't close this, and as my good friend Jerry likes to remember, when Kennedy, when John F. Kennedy banned above ground nuclear testing in 1963, he said it would be wrong if we could risk the life of even one unborn child. We're not talking one, we're talking 24 and climbing. And let me tell you what we're going to do with Chris Busby when this study gets released and it gets published. We're going to do another one. We're going to do low birth rates. We're going to be doing ones probably on more on breast cancer. Because everybody who has touched this field at all knows strontium-90 is one of the most toxic radioactive isotopes known to humans. And nobody disputes that's what this plant is emitting. I was asked by a reporter once, gee, when you talk like that, do you think that could hurt the real estate values in San, in San Luis Obispo? You bet it could. In fact, I said, you know, I think that the real estate board ought to be required to put a disclaimer in every deed of every house they sell within the plume, saying, you could be dying from buying this house. Do you still want to go through with the sale? That's how serious strontium-90 is. Okay, so if that's not an environmental impact question, what is? I want to go to the next question. We know this plant could not legally be built today on those fault lines. And we now know that despite all of the paper pushing and all the obfuscation that PGD has done, to the point where the report that was issued had to be reissued because it was factually incorrect relying on PGD data on seismic. They had to cross out, Hosgrave Fault is 25 kilometers, make it 45 because it is. They had to cross out the fact that PGD had a, a study that was highly questioned. They had to cross that out. And they still came up with the conclusion that the commission has the power to protect PG&E's asset. Well, let me ask you this. What do, we, what do we think? It's June 28th, 2016. What do we think just happened in Great Britain when they voted to leave the, the European Union? What, what had happened when Bernie Sanders got all those millions of people out of nowhere to support him? What happened with all the people who were angry as heck that are voting for Donald Trump? All part of the same symptom. What that was was a rejection of what we believe the political the political parties, the political machinery, we are rejecting the fact that they don't have a first duty to us and they're protecting corporations instead. So if you want to know what Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, and Brexit have in common, it's all of us are saying enough. We are going to hold corporations, no matter how powerful, accountable. And we're going to hold our elected officials, which is the State Lands Commission, accountable to make sure that the wrongdoer, those who choose to destroy the commons, will be held liable. Those who choose to not haul their garbage away, whether you're a fish restaurant or you're a nuclear power plant, if you got garbage, you pay to take it away. Right? That's an externality. So let me leave you with this one last thought. I really believe strongly that the Supreme Court of the State of California will tell the State Lands Commission to do its job. But I'm hoping, it is my fervent and sincere belief, that the State Lands Commission will do its job. What's this case all about? We've been fighting for years. That Jerry and I did our first book on nuclear energy in 1997. It was a college textbook published by Simon & Schuster. So we don't come late and lately to this, to this battle. What this battle is about is all these years we've been saying nuclear has no place in California's electrical future. Finally, pg and &E agrees. Okay. That took a long time. We are grateful. Second thing they said, we can replace Diablo with 100% renewable power. We also agree. We've been ar arguing that. Glad that's settled. Third thing they said is, we really have to take care of labor when we close this plant. 
which was a proposal we made, by the way, at the World Business Academy. Let's take care of labor. They should not have to pay the penalty of this plant closing. Let's retrain, let's rehire, so that when we close this plant, all we're doing is sacrificing the economic interest of one company. And here's why we're trying to change that one company's direction. That company, PG&E, is on trial today in the state of California for billions of dollars of damages for blowing up half the town of San Bruno, California. They are under the threat of federal, federal criminal prosecution. Which, by the way, a federal criminal prosecution might even invalidate them as a license holder of a federal nuclear plant. Interesting thought. So what did PG&E do for which they are being now sued up in Cal Northern California this week? According to the plaintiffs and according to the state of California, PG&E acted with careless disregard of public health and safety in the pursuit of profit in a criminal way, not just a civil way. That's what's happening at Diablo Canyon. A plant that they know is going to close in nine years. A plant that they know can be replaced with renewable energy. A plant that they know, once it is closed, will cost them some money, but will, if the EIR is done, prove conclusively that there is a damage that every time a radioactive isotope of strontium-90 goes up their flu, and every day we sit here on a seismic fault line that could go boom in any second, that that environmental impact possibility requires an examination. If they disagree with our facts, great, that's what the EIR is for. We do not believe they have the option of doing the CEQA. And I'm going to ask the State Lands Commission today, would you like to have been the organization that approved the failure to maintain the San Bruno pipeline and give them that opportunity? Or would you like to avoid blowing up San Bruno, which would be a far better thing? The same company, PG&E, in the docket for blowing up a town because of careless disregard of public health and safety in pursuit of profit. Why does that matter to me? It matters to me because when we started the World Business Academy in 1986, our goal was to say, you know what? Business is the most powerful institution on the planet. If business agrees to be responsible for the good of society and make a profit, we all benefit. But if business is unwilling to pursue profit at the risk of human health and safety, that's an illegitimate purpose. It took us a long time to reach that conclusion as a nation with regard to smoking and tobacco companies. And we finally concluded, you know, addicting people to the point of death for profit just isn't right. And we also, have, we also saw what happened when the oil companies were given a pass, even though since the early 70s, we now know from their internal memorandum, they knew about climate change. So we're approaching PGE and saying, look, why don't you do the right thing by the people of the state of California? If the EIR comes out in your favor, great. That's all we ask for. Look at the facts. If the EIR does not come out in your favor, you should thank us because we helped you avoid a corporate crime. And that's what the World Business Academy is about. It's to help businesses do the right thing for the right reason and be profitable. Thank you very much. Did you know a lot of the waste from nuclear uh, power plants goes to making weapons? It's a fact. Like to be just anywhere, pleased at any time. Thinking of such other things soon will turn the mind. Yes, they will. Improbabilities. It's not as easy as it seems to be. I say, oh, time, you have changed.